And like Freddy Krueger, I'm back. My name is Sam Vaknin. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. And today we are going to dis discuss the Manosphere. The mainstream media would have you believe that the Manosphere is that niche in cyberspace where misogynistic men congregate in order to plot how to exact revenge upon um, incalcitrant and exploitative women. But there's a lot more to it than this. The Manosphere reflects the congruence and confluence of several very important social and cultural trends. And it is comprised of disparate elements which disagree with each other and even harshly criticize each other. So to generalize this way is both inaccurate and misleading. Let's start with, start with pickup artists, PUAs. These are communities of men guided by self-imputed experts, so-called experts, who purport to have found the exact sequence of buttons to push to get a woman to succumb and offer access to her body. So if you follow their recipes, there is no woman in the world who will be able to resist. Of course, pickup artists fail to see the irony. Like home broken and trained puppies, they jump through hoops held high by females and they adhere religiously to a script that is written entirely by the fair sex. It's kind of, you want to sleep with me? You have to go through these motions. You have to act clownishly for hours and then you may succeed. I have even less respect for self-disparaging and self-loathing incels. These guys whine constantly and pathetically about being shunned by women and how they have a God-given right to sex by force if need be. These are the black pillars, the people who took the black pill. Some of these misfits even undergo extensive cosmetic surgeries to fix their alleged facial deformities. It's a form of body dysmorphic insanity known as look maxing. Now black pills, red pills, blue pills, these come from the movie The Matrix where people were given pills which allowed them to see reality for what it is and other people took pills which um, misled them to regard the matrix as reality. So if you take a red pill or if you take a black pill you're exposed to reality as it is. You wake up, so to speak. You wake up from the matrix and you are able to discern what is really happening and to defend yourself or protect yourself from untoward um, machinations and stratagems, especially by women. Red pillars, as opposed to incels, are more benign. They claim only to have seen the light and the true nature of women as rapacious and psychopathic entities who leverage the institutions of society to their unbridled and disempathic benefit. So say the red pillars. And of course, unfortunately, the logical extension of this alleged power asymmetry and power grab is to avoid all committed relationships. Enter MGTOW, men going their own way. The thinking is this, casual sex is fine, Committed relationships, including and especially marriage, play to the benefit of women. Women use the law, use, I mean, legislation, use institutions to extract and extort men, to extract benefits and extort men. So when they get married with a man, they then abscond with half his property and migrate towards a higher level men. We'll come to it in a, in, in a few minutes. Now, all these the MGTOWs, the red pillars, the black pillars, and any other pillars uh, of society, all of them uh, breed on the, on the grounds, and they are a groundswell, which reflects uh, really unprecedented social trends. Human society had first come to being in an organized sense, with the agricultural revolution. Uh, 
about 10,000 years ago, Jericho, ostensibly, was the first urban center in today's Palestine. And there was 10,000 years ago. So for thousands, for millennia, for thousands of years, we have been organizing society around specific gender roles. Women born with one set of gen genitalia had their assigned roles in society. And men, similarly, born with another set of genitalia and a different hormonal structure and more musculature, had their roles in society. In many societies, the roles were not considered superior or inferior. Women were not considered inferior to men. They were considered different to men. And because the belief was that women had different end endowments, distinct endowments to men, they were relegated to and confined to a highly specific set of functions, which they could never exit. There was sort of a glass ceiling, if you wish. Men, similarly, were confined and imprisoned and incarcerated within a role space, a space of functions. And so they, women, for, uh, uh, men, for example, had to do everything which, which concerned muscles and strength and brawn. Women had to do everything which, which uh, uh, had to do everything which had to do with the family, or raising children, child rearing. And so these roles ossified over time, coalesced and ossified and fossilized. And by by the 19th century, during the Victorian era, gender roles were codified, literally codified. Up until that time, women were considered chattel, property of men similar to beds or, I mean, pieces of furniture. And in the Victorian era, they were, on the one hand, liberated in some sense, especially the economic sense, but on condition that they adhere to and accept highly specific gender roles from which they could not deviate. And if they did deviate, they were imprisoned. For example, there was a movement called the suffragettes, and they tried to open up society to level the playing field, and many of them were, were in prison. They were matrons, they were respectable ladies, but they were put in prison. So the Victorian era was a Faustian deal. A mis, uh, 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 the women sold their freedom in certain arenas of life, for example, politics, in return for the protection of society. So society protected their property, society protected their access to their husband's property, Society protected their child rearing functions and society codified men's role in ascertaining and securing sufficient means to raise children. And on the other hand, women gave up access to certain types of education, um, most professions and politics. This was the Victorian Faustian deal, which was undermined mainly in the 1930s, 40s, 50s and 60s by feminism and the families. There is no question that traditional gender roles are dead and that sex has become merely a physical function, no longer associated with intimacy. Both men and women feel disoriented and overlooked in this maelstrom of gender vertigo. Um, the pill, contraception, widespread or widely available abortion, they all liberated women. They restored women's ownership and control of their own bodies. From that moment on, women were the choice makers. They were the decision makers as to the structure of the family, the size of the family, or whether to have a family at all. It is also true that women are empowered and have been only recently emancipated, are imitating the traits and behaviors of men, but not of men generally, of antisocial men. It is veritably post a post-apocalyptic age for relationships and dating. We know that children who are abused in families tend to become abusers later in life. They tend to emulate an antisocial and psychopathic role. They tend to internalize or introject the abuser. Minorities such as women who have been, people who have been abused tortured, traded um, over millennia. I mean, women 
have been enslaved for 10,000 years. Women have been treated as property. Women, women have been tortured, mutilated, sold. Women really have a record which far outweighs anything done to black people in the United States. I mean, slavery in the United States pales in comparison to what women had to go through literally in all patriarchal societies and cultures around the world. So now that they have been emancipated and liberated, it is not surprising to psychologists at least, it's not surprising to social psychologists, that women are adopted, adopting the role of their abusers. Women now want to be the abusers. They are the abused children who later become abusers. They become narcissistic. They become psychopathic because all abused people, all victims of abuse, adopt narcissistic and psychopathic traits. Actually, today, the bleeding edge research shows that it is impossible to distinguish the victim of complex post-traumatic stress disorder it's impossible to distinguish the victim of domestic violence, spousal abuse, family abuse, uh, narcissistic abuse. It's impossible to distinguish the victim of all these types of abuse from people with personality disorders. For example, victims of CPTSD, victims of complex post-traumatic stress disorder, behave exactly like people with borderline personality disorders. They have modal ability. They are... They are um, emotionally dysregulated. They are very frequently psychopathic. They have no impulse control. They are defiant. They have splitting defenses. They see everything as uh, good or bad, uh, black and white. The Cotomos thinking. So it's, it, it's no wonder, it's not surprising that women, having, having been liberated after 10,000 years of slavery, have become effectively psychopaths, absolute, absolute psychopaths. This was to have been expected. The solution is not avoidance or manipulation. We need a new social contract between the bearers of disparate genitalia, and we need to think with our heads rather than with our nether organs. <clears throat> the thing is that, as I said, more and more financially emancipated women mimic psychopathic men. They adopt both, both psychopathic misbehaviors and psychopathic traits. And there's a, a curious gender inversion seems to be occurring. Men are assuming hitherto feminine roles and reactive patterns, even as women are becoming more and more manly, so to speak. They assume um, masculine gender roles. For example, judging by numerous reports from the crowded clinics of couple therapies, men, men are now more sex-averse, frigid, than women. Uh, men tend to consume porn and masturbate much more than seek a woman to have sex with. They compensate with porn, pornography. This used to be what women did in the 1950s and 60s. There was no concept of a frigid men. Women were frigid. Now the majority are actually men. I am not talking only about primary breadwinners. 43% of all households in um, the primary breadwinner, the person who brings money home exclusively, is a woman now. 40% of all children are raised by single women. So there's an inversion of role, roles there as well. Women are becoming the providers. W majority of college graduates are women. Majority of Judges, majority of teachers, majority of doctors are women. These are high-paying, high-paying professions. Women are better equipped to deal with a networked, empathic world, based on empathy, founded on empathy. And so, of course, they have a, an advantage uh, in future. But I'm talking about far more fundamental, primitive, animalistic things. I'm talking about the sex drive, people's sex drive, Men are becoming more like women used to be in the 1950s, and women are becoming more like men used to be throughout the ages. Promiscuous, adulterous, psychopathic, disempathic, users, predators. Men today are more romantic. They are more likely to be infatuated. 
studies show that men are more likely to suggest to transition to a committed relationship after a bout of casual sex. In other words, after a one-night stand, the man is more likely to ask to see the woman again. Most women, uh, women overwhelmingly decline, decline such overtures for further contact after one-night stands. So it seems that men are, have become the weaker sex or the softer sex. Many men are stay-at-home dads. Stay-at-home dad is, is a new phenomenon and already overtaken. Um, you know, modern Western societies, at least, civilized industrial societies. Women, as I said, became primary breadwinners. And women are catching up to men in the frequency of cheating on their intimate partners and the number of, of one-night stands, of casual sex encounters, especially when these involve drinking or other forms of substance abuse. Women drink as much as men. They drink as much as men. They have casual sex as much as men. They cheat almost as much as men do. And they have become men. These behaviors used to be the differential diagnosis, so to speak, between men and women. In the 1950s, women did not cheat, men cheated. Women did not drink, men drank. Men drank. Women did not have casual sex almost. Men did. I mean, that's how you, t that's how you used to tell a man apart from, uh, from a woman. And, and today, these distinctions are gone. Behaviorally, at least, men and women are indistinguishable. We have one gender. I call it a unigender world. We have one gender with two different types of genitalia. In many places, more women than men frequent singles bars and dives. Women are surging on dating apps, where three quarters of, of women admit to scouting for anonymous sex partners or uh, for infidelity accomplices. And women sue, of course, for 73% of all divorces. The floodgates are wide open. In a unigender world, Gender roles are fluid and often inverted. Gender vertigo ensues and ensued and it was followed by male avoidance in a largely misogynistic manosphere. I mentioned only. And again, all this is part and parcel of a bigger trend. The ascent of, lone, of aloneness, atomization, alienation, what Emil Durkheim the sociologist, 19th century sociologist, the father of sociology, Emil Durkheim called it anomie. He said that as the population explodes in numbers, societies will lose their coherence and cohesion, their meaning, norms, values, everything will be destroyed. He predicted a wave of suicide and he predicted the rise of loneliness and aloneness, which Marx also predicted. He called it alienation. More and more people of both genders choose to live alone. Since 2016, in the West at least, the majority of people actually live alone. They find their own exclusive company irresistible. Technology rendered us utterly self-sufficient. So why be bothered with the quirks, moods, emotions, and expectations of other people? I mean, relationship is, is a full-time job, and it's a difficult job. It requires investment, it requires um, a monitoring, it, it, it requires um, recreating the will time and again, it requires compromise, it requires, it requires skills that we have lost and that we do not wish to regain. Because frankly, we don't need each other anymore. Procreation, marriage and family are phased out. Sex is gradually displaced by pornography and the occasional casual masturbation with someone else's body. When it comes to relationships, the prize is just not worth the price. The common wisdom when I was growing up was that as men get older, they have a greater number of potential partners. And this is known as age hypergamy. So a man age 60 can theoretically have a partner, a woman, as an intimate partner who is age 20. It's not that uncommon. But a, um, a woman age 60 usually cannot have an intimate partner age 20. So men can choose from any age. Women are compelled to choose older men. As women age, they have a shrinking pool of possible mates. And this is age hypogamy. So men have age hypergamy and women have a age hypogamy. This evolutionary asymmetry 
had always had profound social implications. It affected the structure of our societies as well as our institutions, and it affected the ways that these institutions function, both formal ways, codified mores, norms, even laws, and informal ways. We all relied on this basic assumption that women marry up in terms of age and men can marry anyone, up and down. But all this is beginning to unravel and to change for the first time since the agricultural revolution thousands of years ago. Women are emancipated sexually and financially. They're gradually taking over the reins. This is, <laughs> this is a tectonic shift. It's an earthquake of unprecedented proportions, which midges dwarfs the pandemic. Women are taking over. It's the end of the age of men. Women are adopting hitherto exclusively masculine and even defiantly antisocial behaviors, including ones pertaining to mate choice and mate selection. And sex hypogamy is the new normal. Women prefer to stay single. They prefer to stay childless. Women are wedded to their careers. They're workaholics. Women, um, the, the top priority of women, the, the utmost value is self-actualization. And so they choose to sleep only with better, weak, emasculated, effeminate men, usually in hookups or short-term so-called relationships. Are you listening well? Women don't want alpha males anymore. They don't want winners anymore. The, the MGTOWs and the incels, and the, I mean, the, they get it all wrong. They get it all wrong. Women are looking for better males, weak males, emasculated males, zeros, losers. Women are looking for men to have casual sex and dump and discard, disposable men. Women are looking for men, in other words, that they can fully control and manipulate. Our dystopian reality is, is unigender. It is a world without women, in effect, in this sense. Sex hypergamy, a preference for accomplished, strong alpha males, even for casual sex, is out the window. Wake up. Women want to be on top in every possible way and in every possible situation. So, red pillars got it right. They got it right when they say there's an 80-20 Pareto principle. But they got it wrong as to the identity of the 20. 80% 80 of women do want to sleep with only 20% of all men. That part is true. But the red pillars and the black pillars and the mixed they are getting the 20% wrong. Women want to copulate with the 20% who are loser, better males, weak, not men in the classical Victorian gender role sense, not winners, not rich, not famous, not powerful, not intelligent. Women don't like that. Women are competitive now. They want to, they want to be the winners. They want to be on top. They want to control. They want to dictate. They're nobody's. They are nobody's whore, you know? Women assiduously avoid the intimidating and challenging alpha men whose success and prowess constitute an unbearable narcissistic injury to the competitive, independent female. Aren't you getting this? Look around you. You, I mean, incels and MGTOWs and, and all these manosphere guys, I don't know which universe they inhabit. They are still bodybuilding. They are still emphasizing muscles, the way they look, plastic surgery. Who, who cares about all this? No woman that I know. Women are interested in one thing only, an animated dildo that they can do with anything they want. The nicer it is, the weaker it is, the more cooperative it is, the better it is. Why the better it is? Because compromise is guaranteed. Because a transactional, women want a transactional relationship where they contribute in this, to decision-making as much as the men. And that doesn't go well with alpha men. Indeed, alpha men today are called jerks. There is a surging global subculture of misogynism, woman hatred that women have been ignoring at their, peril, at their peril. I mentioned incels, involuntary 
involuntary celibates. I mentioned MGTOW, men going their own way. I mentioned pickup artists. I mentioned red pillars, women who realize, uh, men who realize that women rule the world and are cruelly manipulating men. I mentioned black pillars, men who give up on ever having any sexual or romantic relationship with women, and so on and so forth. Many in these groups espouse militancy and even violence against women. Women have been murdered by members of, of, of uh, these groups, black pillars. Such strident misogynism is new. Misogynism is not new. Man has always been afraid, terrified, by, women, uh, by the woman's sexuality, by women's sexuality, female sexuality. The female sexuality threatened the coherence and cohesion of the family and the verifiable paternity of children. If a woman strayed, if she had sex with strangers, um, the unhappy husband ended up raising other, other men's children. So men were terrified by uh, female sexuality. Indeed, in the Middle Ages, the vagina was supposed to have had uh, teeth. I'm kidding you not. It was called vagina dentata. And women were ter uh, men were terrified that uh, the woman might, you know, <laughs> uh, close the trap on, on whatever they had to offer by extension. Woman hatred is not new. Um, for example, there was a guy about 100 years ago, Otto Weininger, and August uh, Strindberg, famous playwright. They were They were... Rabid misogynists. Rabid misogynists. Much worse, by the way, than anything on offer today because they were intelligent and educated. When I was 19, I, I wrote the following text. And just for you to understand, I grew up with the, with the last of the dinosaurs. So 19 is a long time ago. And I wrote this. I think that there is a schism between men and women. I'm sorry, but I'm neo Weiningerian. I fear women. I loathe women viscerally. While in the abstract, I recognize that they are members of the human species and eligible to the same rights as men do. Still, the biological, biochemical, and psychological differences between us, men versus women, are so profound that I think that a good case can be made in favor of a theory which will assign women to another, perhaps even more advanced, species. I'm heterosexual so it has nothing to do with my sexual preferences. Also, I know that what I have to say will alienate and anger you. It was an, an article that I published. It was 19. Still, I believe, as does Dr. Gray, that cross-gender communication is all but impossible. Uh, we are separated by biology, by history, by culture, by chemistry, by genetics, in short, by too much. Where we see cruelty, women see communication. Where we see communication, they see indifference. Where we see a future, they see a threat. Where we see a threat, they see an opportunity. Where we see stagnation, women see security. And where we see safety, they see death. Where we get excited, they get alarmed. Where we get alarmed, they get bored. We love with our senses, they love with their wombs and mind. They tend to replicate, we tend to assimilate. They are Trojan horses. We are dumb Hercules. Hercules. They succumb in order to triumph. We triumph in order to succumb. And this was written decades ago. So, you know, incels think they've invented the world. They've discovered the will. You know, MGTOWs, they think they are they're the first ever. It's wrong. There have been numerous such movements, numerous such movements throughout history, most recently in the 19th century. I mentioned Otto Weininger, who was in the early 20th century. And even someone like me, a kid, 19 years old, was able to write this. And it was published and accepted because the discourse was on. As feminism erupted on the scene, the discourse was on. Men were alarmed. Men felt defensive. Men felt aggressive. Men felt frustrated. Men hated women for upending the apple cart, for upsetting the social order. It's natural. People defend vested interests. People defend a position of superiority against usurpers and upstarts. And of course, slaveholders fight a civil war to protect slavery. Women were slaves and they were rebelling Spartacus wise. And of course, the Roman Empire reacted. Feminism, however, went astray. It caricatured men into a one dimensional stereotype 
And now women aspire to become that caricature. Women drink heavily, curse profusely, are in yourself antisocial and defiant, promiscuously and indiscriminately engage in emotionless one-night stands, they become workaholic, they cheat on their intimate partners, and generally act as grandiose and entitled narcissists devoid of any hint of empathy. Yes, this is the profile of the modern woman, especially under age 35. It's not me who is saying this. It's social scientists and psychologists such as Twinge and Campbell and many others. The new generations of women are like the old generations of dissolute psychopathic men described by Cleckley in his masterpiece, The Mask of Sanity. When confronted about their egregious misconduct, women respond indignantly with a double standard, standard statement. When you confront a woman and you say, you misbehaved, it's not okay what you've done. She answers, this is what men also do, no? You've been doing it for centuries, why can't I do it now? The answer is, well, absolutely not. It's not true that all men behave this way. A tiny sliver of minority of men behave this way. You're imitating the wrong type of men. Men that even other men frown upon. Only some men behave the way that most women behave today. These men are widely criticized, chastised, and shunned by the community. These men are decried. They are held in contempt by the vast majority of men. And yet these are the men that women emulate. Don't misunderstand. Men, my position, men and women, of course, should be utterly equal. Utterly equal when it comes to all public goods, education, healthcare, you name it. Men and women should have equal access to absolutely everything. Equal wages, all manner of rights, economic opportunities, the law, treatment by authorities and in society. It's, it's inconceivable that people should be discriminated against because of their genitalia. It, it borders on insanity. No one is saying this. But there's a difference between being equal and being identical. Women should be equal, but different. Gender differences are the poetry. They're the poetry in the engine of life itself. Sexual attraction, family formation, procreation, romantic love, they're all founded on gender differences. But now women want to be identical to men, another type of men. Not merely equal to men, but identical to men. And this threatens the very fabric and existence of our species. And what is much worse, in their attempts to emulate men, Women use the feminist sexist caricature of the so-called typical male as a template. What is this typical male in the eyes of the feminists? It's a dictator, drunk, vulgar, men whore, womanizer, who cheats on his spouse and works himself to death in a jungle hostile universe. Really? I don't recognize a single man I know in this description, which is very common in feminist literature, especially radical feminist literature. Women, women have been taught by feminists to mistrust men. About half of all women are bitter and broken victims of abuse, divorce, single mothers, impoverished and hopeless. Men Go Their Own Way is a movement in the manosphere of men who renounce all contact with women, except perhaps casual sex. And it's a reaction to the fact that women have gone their own way a long time ago. Men are going their own way because there are no women left. There are no women left. Only narcissists with a different genital apparatus. How tragic that we have lost each other, men and women. How heartbreaking. 